All oh, right, I think we're operational. I think we're we are go. I needed some light refreshment today, guys. It's been very humid out there. Oh, welcome to the Edbud live stream. I think this is the 39th live stream. Doesn't seem like that many. In fact, the, the whole last year seems like about two weeks to me. But <laughs> thanks for joining us, guys. Let's go through and see who is here. Cheekster Triple Seven is in the house. He uh, was here a little earlier. Hopefully, still here. Um, it, it is my birthday coming up very soon. It isn't quite today, but it, this is the closest live stream day. So, um, yeah, it's it's almost there. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Uh, Stephen um, Gersdorf is here. He says, love this two hours of runners live stream. Kavizi then, Ed Bud. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us today. Steve is here as well. He says, hi there, just chilling while his son fights going to sleep. How many hours until morning? That's what I say when I go to sleep, Steve. I look and say, how many hours is it until the morning time we can do some more stuff? Uh, Mike Gambus here. Says, hello, Ed and everyone. Hi, Mike. Thanks for joining us today. Kevin Church is here. He says, hi Ed, it's your live stream or the repair shop this evening. Um, is that is that a show, the repair shop? I'm not I'm not sure. Thanks for joining us though. I, I think I may have beaten off competition of the repair shop. Danny Wise here, he says, hi Ed, it's your live stream or spring watch. <laughs> oh, crikey. Um, I think my daughter's watching The Loud House downstairs, which is sort of like a Nickelodeon cartoon kind of thing. She's enjoying herself with that. Um, Trevor Phillips is here, he says waiting for Mr. Smooth Voice himself. Yeah, I'm not sure why I got given this voice, it, it's, it's a bit of an odd one. <laughs> uh, you know, a tall, thin, sort of lanky, lanky dude, blessed with a sort of quite deep voice. Although all of all of my family have got that, you see, my, um, my cousin John's in the house, I think, there he is. He says, uh, hi everybody, hey Ed, and happy birthday. Thanks, buddy. I hope you had a good one at the weekend. Sorry I couldn't get over to see you. It was a bit manic. <laughs> it was a bit manic. That's all I say. Uh, I hope you had a good one, though. But yeah, John's got the same voice. He's got quite a low register there. We do a good Johnny Cash impression. Not so good um, Ramones type voice. <laughs> uh, who else is here? Mr. Jameson's here. He says, yo, Beast and all. Beast is here, I think. How's it going, Beast? Yeah, Beast is all right. Um, Beast is probably after some more food. That's all. That's all there was. There'll there'll be more later, Beast. Um, no, leave leave those records. It's just constant irritation from Beast always. Um, Trevor Phillips says, according to Kafuzi, um, I'm trying to figure out what's what's going on there. Not sure. <laughs> um, he says, I reckon all of us Somerset lads sound good on the mic. Yeah, it's that's an interesting one. It's it's all about um, it's not just about microphones with with the voice thing. It's a little EQ, a little compression. You got to sprinkle along a little bit of uh, a bit of the spice to get it just right. Um, who else we got in the house? I'm quite amazed we got as many people as we got because I know that there's a another quite large YouTuber who's who's doing a live stream at the same time. So I'm just like the little fish swimming around enjoying myself here with you guys um who else have we got um benny's news shoe down um says has a uh, record for quality picks and sound equipment and shoes oh too true yeah i i like uh i like my sound equipment tweed fender amplifiers that's my uh, that's my thing or any fender amplifiers really they just they smell good you switch them on they sound good and they smell good and uh, if you're a poor student, that's all you need is a valve amplifier. You can put it in the middle of your room and sort of sort of sit near it and you can play and you can listen to the sounds. You can warm yourself as well on the valves. So it's got like a double, it's a double whammy. That's what it is. It's a double whammy. Um, we've got um, Ozenfant Backtros is here. He says, hello, Ed crew. Thanks for joining us. And also, Rob Weather always, he's always, Rob's always here. He says, good day, runners. Good day. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's hard earned today. 
hard earned today, seven miles. Um, so I've done about 14 miles now on the Peg Trail 3. Um, that video will possibly be coming up later on today. Depends how much of the editing I get done. Um, it may be tomorrow morning. Maybe I'll, I'll try and get it done this evening. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's uh, it's not going to be like a race shoe for me by any stretch, but it's a good a good mile muncher. I've, I've had some good times in there, but it's, it's so warm at the moment here. Very humid. It's just punishing even just sort of running some easy easy paces. Um, who else we got here? Uh, Benny's new sh shoe down says Rebel 2 from New Balance has taken over the fleet footed crew in Sydney, Australia. Yeah, it's a great shoe. The Rebel 2 is a really good shoe. I saw that Andy uh, Fodrun is enjoying enjoying his time in that one. Uh, Robin's here. Robin, good to see you in the live chat. We have uh, Ron Tommy as well. Uh, Ed birthday coming up very soon, very soon. We have the Boston, no we, don't, we haven't got the Boston incoming, we've got the Adios 6 incoming. Hopefully that might arrive tomorrow, we shall have to see. I'm hoping that might appear tomorrow so we can test it out. And we'll get back on the uh, on the pavements and the roads tomorrow. So I've just been concentrating on the trails the last couple of days. Just give my legs a bit of a rest I suppose, it's a bit softer the ground there. And uh, yeah, just squirrel watching, that's what I've been doing the last couple of days. Uh, Victor Fernandez is here. Good to see you again, Victor, on the live stream. Um, Replicant is here as well. We've got Jace Galaxy 74. This is morning from Adelaide, Australia. Wow. Happy birthday for soon. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. Much appreciated. Rob Weather also has got notification for the track and trace app today, so now I have to isolate for. Oh, no, man. Rob, that is not good news. Well, it's kind of good news in, in a way that it. It's told you that you you know you were possibly near to somebody that may have had the virus, but yeah, that that kind of sucks. No running, I guess. No real way out of that one, I suppose, is there? Unless you can get some sort of test or something, I suppose, to prove that you you haven't got it or whatever. Um, well, that's bad news. I hope you got a garden, Rob, or or access to some sort of uh, some sort of treadmill or something. Let's hope so. Otherwise, it's up and down the stairs, Rob. You know, you've got to do it. Uh, Robin says he's been suffering the heat past few days after just the pace. Yeah, I've that's exactly it, Robin. Exactly it for me. It's it's been really humid, uh, very close. Like it feels like there's going to be some big thunderstorm or something. Uh, runs like a donkey. Thank you very much for the super chat there with the with the birthday cake. I fancy a bit of birthday cake. I don't know if there's any cake going. Maybe, I think there's some nice sweet chilli crisps or something. Oh, maybe indulge in those in a little while. Um, if John Vazinski's, uh, hopefully he's still here. John, do you remember the Jonathan crisps? There were these incredibly powerful spicy crisps. I remember John managed to eat like, I don't know, it's like four or five packs of them in one, sit in one sitting. Oh man, those crisps were warm, John. Those are, those are warm crisps, that's for sure. And there was a there was a support line that you could ring to tell them about your experience eating the crisps. I remember you rang them to inform them of the quality of their crisps. That was, that was good times, man. Good times. Thanks for the best wishes there, Cheeks to Triple Seven. Uh, VJ says, "Happy birthday, bud! Thanks very much." Twenty one again. I know you can't believe it, guys, but it's true. Uh, Lee Sumner's here. So this evening, Ed thought it'd be good to have a, a brew dog. Watch the football and yourself. Can it get better? No, it can't. I know uh, the England are playing at the moment, aren't they? So yeah, if the if the concurrent views are down a little bit, then I I guess you know we can understand that. Uh, we do have a bit of a heat wave in England. It's probably going to last like you know a couple of days or something like that. It'll be back to the normal weather. Um, Kevin Church says yes. I won over the repair shop. Awesome. Um, uh, try bro try, uh, it says greetings from Austin, Texas. Thanks for tuning in, it's much appreciated. Um, uh, what else we got going on here? Um, move more now, James Nielsen says, think I joined last year's birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Um, Run Tommy is in the house as well. Thanks very much for the best wishes. Uh, Mike T says, hey Ed, hope you're, you're, you're well, looking forward to the Peg Trail 3 review. Yeah, coming up a bit later on for you, that one. 
Um, I've got all the footage kind of there. Um, so I, t I took the camera out yesterday. Today I went out again, but just left the camera at home. I thought I'd probably drop the camera at some point because it's just... Yeah, I don't think I've ever been that hot. Kurt Stieg says, hey Ed, lucky to be able to hop on a bit today. Awesome, thanks for joining us, Kurt. It's appreciated. Um, Stephen says it's uh, in Southern California, so it's 12 noon there at the moment. Awesome. Yeah, we're, we're about, it's about 10 past 8 here in the UK uh, in the evening. So the sun's just going down. Things are starting to cool down just a little bit. <coughs> uh, Linus Lau is here. He says, happy birthday, Ed. Thank you. Much appreciated. Um, John says he understands no problem. Oh yeah, you got to meet Fergus. Yeah, I think he was. I think he was a bit grouchy by that point. Um, he was. He was a bit under the weather um, a few days over the weekend, but I think he's back on form now. Yeah, he's he's back on form big time. Um, Ed says he got the Forerunner nine four five. Awesome. I hope that turns up soon and that does the does the job for you, Ed. Um, I know you were looking into watches before in the last live stream. I think it was. Um, so yeah, I'll tell you what, I was really impressed, um, I'd, I'd let this uh, the Kuros um, Apex get really low on battery and it goes to like a weird sort of suspended mode but it carried on like calculating what I'd done, it's kind of cool. So when I plugged it back in and charged it, I hadn't lost any of the info and any of the data so that was really awesome. Um, uh, Benny's new shoe, shoe down says let them eat cake and try shoot. Too true. Yeah, I got a good price on the Adios uh, 6 um, Silview, um, Gabriel. Um, I had a like a birthday discount, so I got to use that and I got it down to about, I think it was about £85, pounds, something like that. So it's not bad, you know, for a, for a good sort of higher, higher range shoe. Um, I really enjoyed the Adios 4. So I'm hoping that with a little light strike, it's going to be a little bit more of a responsive ride. And you guys know how much I love the Adios Pro. Um, obviously, my I think my best 10k time and also my half marathon uh, personal best now are both in that shoe. So yeah, I like the, I like Light Strike Pro. It seems to work for me. You see quite a lot of the taller runners using um, the Adios Pro. So maybe there's something in that. I don't know. Uh, Garana87 says happy birthday, thank you, it's much appreciated. Richard Rendell's here as well, how you doing Richard, hope you're doing fine. Um, Benny's new showdown says anyone here in Bristol, how's the running generally in England as it heats up? Um, I'm not far away from Bristol here, uh, as the crow flies, I think it's about sort of 35 miles, something like that. it's not actually that far, but the roads are not the best I suppose you could say. But I bet there's someone here who's nearby, maybe if they're if they're listening in. Kevin Church says nice energy drink there. It's, it's a good drink. I can feel it. I uh, feel it filling me with energy as I speak. Um, what else we got going on here? So uh, Run Tommy says picked up the Endorphin Pros for $121. What What's that in, in pounds roughly? Because that, that seems like a brilliant deal. Um, for that that sort of price, that seems like a really good deal. I don't think you can lose there, Run Tommy. Uh, Ted and Ruth says many happy returns and runs. Yeah, I think I'll I'll get out and do some running very early doors tomorrow, um, and over the next few days. Richard Johnson says nice surprise. Uh, <laughs> we don't miss the Napoleon. Ah, now I think that's in reference to my vote for Pedro T-shirt. Um, Napoleon Dynamite is one of my favourite films. I might see if I can watch that later on, actually. I love that film. Um, Napoleon is the classic underdog. And a lot of people just think that film's kind of like a bit silly and, and wacky. But actually, I kind of feel... Well, I used to feel like Napoleon, I suppose, back when I was younger. That's, that's how I used to feel doing the weird stuff, you know, that whole bit at the start of the film where he's got the action figure with the fishing twine on it and he throws it out the, the back of the of the uh, bus. I mean, I didn't do that, but I used to do stuff with little action figures like making parachutes and stuff for them and throwing them into the air and all that kind of thing. 
I'd be quite happy doing that now, in fairness, really. Not sure what my wife would think of it, but... Yeah, I like doing stuff like that, it's fun. I don't want to ever lose that. That, that feeling of, of fun and just that liberating feeling. I think that's why I run. I mean, when you think about it, you, you're running in a straight line. You, you know, it's kind of kind of wacky, in a way. You know, you put some shorts on and these special shoes, and you you just you run. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um, and not a lot of people get it, do they? But we all get it. We understand. Stephen um, Gersdorf is talking about speakers. In terms of speakers, I think these days I, I just don't have the back to lift Vox speakers around. They're just they're too heavy. Um, John John Bozinski will back me up on this one as well. They're just so, so heavy. I remember we used to lug these uh, Fender DeVilles around, you know, like 20 years ago. These really, really heavy amps. Um, I can't remember what speakers were in those now. Maybe like eminent speakers or something, but they were beasts, those amplifiers. And we didn't need anywhere near the power. Um, these days I like a nice light amp, uh, the, the Fender Pro Junior. Um, even that Vox, I've got a Vox AC15 and that's, that's heavy enough. I've just bought a um, the, the Vibro Champ, the, the new reissue, which has got like a 10 inch speaker. It's only 5 watts. Um, but yeah, that'll be nice. And of course the classic Tweed Deluxe as well. You can't can't beat it. That is the sound. The golden sound. The gold tone, as Kurt Vile would call it. Richard Rendell says he's just in from a run, still hot out there. Oh yeah, it's it's baking. It's baking out there, Richard. You wanna get the cake mix, just get it outside and it'll be it'll be done in no time at all. Um yeah, Kurt Steeg says I'm on the birthday pint, birthday cake. Absolutely. Um, Benny's new showdown says here in Australia, Melbourne is it extended a week's lockdown by another week. Ooh. Yeah, that's not good. I know things are uh, uh, there are some there's some increases here. I'm just hoping it kind of stays at that sort of level. It doesn't creep up really quickly like it did before. Um, yeah, we need to get those other, other people vaccinated and, and safe. Uh, Gavin Braden says, happy birthday, Ed. Enjoy the Guinness and cake. Thank you very much, Gavin. Um, Stephen Gersdorf says, Ed, have a drink of black and tan. I'm not, I'm not sure what that is. I know people used to have, like, um, is it like Guinness and blackcurrant or something? That was strange stuff. Not sure I want to get into that. Uh, Travis Rogan's here. He says, hi, Ed. Hi, Travis. Thanks for tuning in today. If you are in the chat, guys, please do hit that like button. It really does help the channel out a great deal um, with the YouTube algorithm and, you know, all the little elves that are tapping in the keys and all that kind of stuff. It really does help. Richard Rendell says he picked up the uh, Adios 6 as well. Awesome stuff. Hope you enjoy those. I'm looking forward to getting those. I, I grabbed the black and white ones, the classic Adidas ones, because they looked um, closest to the Adidas World Cup or Copa Mundial football boots. That's that's what I'm after in a shoe. Um, Mas Valero um, says he had to create a channel just to show some love. Found your channel recently. Love the content. Thanks. Thanks for uh, for tuning in. That's great stuff. Uh, Stephen says, why do you think Pegs and Nike are the only shoes using AirTech? Is it proprietary or is it trash? No, I, li I like the I like the shoes actually with the, um, the Zoom Air or the Air Zoom. I think perhaps more than the, the straight out foam these days. I think it does add a little bit. And I think also that it, they live up to the, the sort of the pounding as well. They, they can take more abuse, I think, and before they... Uh, the shoe kind of gives out. So, yeah, I mean, with there, it just keeps on going. With foam, it's always going to compress after so long. So, yeah, it might be interesting to see how far people have taken alpha flies up to as opposed to next percent. You know, is the alpha fly going to last you longer? It'd be interesting to know. 
Richard Johnson says there ain't no party like an Ed Bird party. Absolutely. Yeah, we're partying here. Beast is collapsed out on the floor due to heat exhaustion. And uh, I was pretty much like that actually when I got back from the run earlier. I, I don't think I've ever been so hot. It's just you could feel the humidity in the air. And I collected most of the insect population as well out on the trail. I came back and I sort of took my glass off and looked and I was just, yeah, I, I had a whole sort of insect family with me as well <laughs> that come around the, the seven miles. Yeah, Kevin, at times it was it was like running through soup. It literally felt like that. You, as I was breathing in, you can just feel the, the humidity. It's going to take a while. And I think the only way to get used to it is just to get out there and just grind your way through. Like some sort of, I don't know, postman in a in a storm. <laughs> if there's any post people out there, I'd take my hat off to you. What other interesting little things we've got going on here? Let's have a little look. Yeah, I like um, round about that kind of pace, that 138 beats per minute kind of effort. That's still in an aerobic sort of area for me. I mean, if I go ease right back, I'm around, you know, 126, 127, something like that. But yeah, round about that, I can still get a, get a bit of conversation in as I'm going around. And uh, yeah, sometimes you, you need that to sort of take take away some of the sort of doubts in your mind about things if you if you're thinking oh i'm gonna say some stuff into this device here this black box in front of me um it can kind of distract you a little bit but i think when i'm doing some more specific kind of interval runs or something where i've got to concentrate on that i think it's good to leave the the camera at home sometimes john remembers the jonathan crisps awesome Oh yeah, Lucky 13 Gaming says, remember Brannigan's roast beef and mustard flavour? Oh man, yes. Now that was a crisp and I have. I love crisps, I've got to, got to be honest guys. I've got a thing for cheap knockoff frazzles. So those sort of, they taste a bit like bacon, like a bit like bacon fries, I suppose. Um, but they're vegetarian. Um, what's the other ones? Like? The Max Hot Chicken Wings flavour, which again is vegetarian. But they are, oh, they are beautiful. Even Mrs. Edbud likes those, and she's not a big crisp fan. She's into those too. Oh, Rob Weatherall says hey, he's got eyes late, even if he hasn't got any symptoms. So, can be doing full body exercise. Yeah, that's like you can still get some stuff, stuff happening there, Rob. That's a real blow, you know. That's a real blow. I feel for you, buddy. Lucky 13 Games is happy, happy V. Birthday, oh, there you go. <laughs> I caught the second message. Uh, Mark Weston, yes, I did grab the Adios 6 uh, yesterday, and I think they've sent them out, so I might get them tomorrow or the day after, possibly. I think Adidas used the just standard Royal Mail Post here, so and they're always really reliable, actually. They're more reliable than some of the other... Um, like some of the other delivery firms. I had to I had to complain about one last year. I can't remember who it was, was it DPD I think? There's a guy there's a guy bought a package to the door, so I raced down to the door and he was still on my land, just like, you know, five or six steps away from the door. I mean he'd waited like five seconds basically. And he wouldn't give me the package. He said, No, no, I can't give it to you now. No. I'll come back tomorrow. I said, well, tomorrow's Saturday. Are you coming back Saturday? No, no, I, uh, it's bank holiday as well. I'll come back Tuesday. I'm like, seriously, you've got my package. So I complained. Uh, he wouldn't come back, and they got some other guy to come and deliver it. It's just ridiculous, you know. It's actually, literally, you know, a couple of metres away. <laughs> it's totally, totally insane. I couldn't believe it. But that's, that's a real pain, isn't it, when you've got, like, some shoes or some gear coming. And... Um, you know, you're, you're waiting, aren't you? You're waiting, you're hoping that it's going to arrive when you're there or somebody hears it or the bell's working. How many times have you gone out, guys, and tested the bell? 
Is the bell working? Is it working? Yes, it is. I can hear it. Or you've put like a sign up saying, we are here, wait for us. You know, we are definitely in the house. <laughs> Uh, Nick Kennedy said, hey, um, get out early to beat the heat. It was only 14 degrees at 6 a.m. Yeah, I might try and get out early tomorrow morning, I think, um, because today was, oh, it was punishing. My daughter and I went to watch um, uh, Peter Rabbit, Peter Rabbit 2, um, at the cinema, because that's going to open again. And um, I was sat there thinking... I wonder if it's still really warm out there, and it was. <laughs> but I managed to get out. Um, Stephen says about Innovate Shoes. Um, yeah, I, th I think they, with the G270, I think they ha are sort of looking at a shoe there that can be used on trail and some road, certainly. Adios 6, Ed Murphy says. Will the real SL 20.2 please stand up? Yes. Now I think the Adios 6 could fit that that little niche that the SL 20 had, the previous one. This could be the real follow-up. Um, Golf Shan Paul's here. Good. To, oh, pardon me. Good to see you. Um, Eric Fenske is here. He says happy birthday. Thank you very much. And global running day to boot. It's a good day to be alive, too true. Global running day. I did see that Garmin gave me some sort of badge. Said, well done, you got out there on global running day. Incidentally, probably today was the hardest day to get out for me. Some days you get up and you think, let's go, I'm gonna run 50 miles. No, you don't think that every day. You just get out and think, I'm gonna run some miles early today, I'm gonna get them in, I'm really up for it. Today I was just sapped of energy in the morning. I, I just had nothing there and I had to wait a little later. So yeah, it's good to get out there. I think I'm going to aim to try and do some early morning running though where it's still a little cooler. Um, Cheeks of 777 says, can you please rank the shoes faster runs? So Addy Zero, Boston 9, Liberate Nitro, SL20. I, I'd, I'd probably put the Liberate Nitro at the top with the SL20 in the middle, then the Boston 9 um, further down, personally. Michael Ryan says, hang in there. I'm, I'm hanging in there, best I can. Um, Rain Man Sam's in place. How you doing, buddy? Uh, he says, hey man, hope you're doing good. We're doing okay here. Um, I think the replicant also may have picked up the Adios 6 too. Steve says, hey, did you run in the Trail 2 before? No, I haven't tried the Trail 2, um, Steve. I There's one bit of the Trail 2 that I could really do with on the Trail 3. Um, but I will go into that a little bit more um, in, the, uh, in the full review. But yeah, I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying it. My major issue with it is in fairness, it's just a little bit too cushioned for the trails for me. And what I'm finding is I'm getting a little bit of um, debris into the back here. But other than that, there's not really an awful lot wrong with it at all. Okay, so it's a heavy shoe. It's not gonna be for everyone, I don't think. It's, a, it's one heavy shoe. But for a good mile absorber, a mile absorber, that's a good one. Um, yeah, it's gonna do a job. Uh, Chris McFarlane says, I missed the start of the live stream, pesky kids. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks for joining in. I hope they, uh, they've they got to bed now. It's difficult trying to get the kids to bed when it's warm. They don't want to do it. And it's half term and all that. They're all G'd up and they've been eating Skittles. And, you know, they're, they're, they're pushing the boundaries, aren't they? Always. It's a bit like with my daughter. It's a bit like a, uh, I feel like I'm, entering into some business deal. She's like, can I go to bed at nine? No, I wanted her to go to bed at eight, so I'll say half eight, because then she thinks she's one. But I think she's figured that out already. Um, Rudis says he wishes Chorus had MP3 or Spotify support. Yeah, I've got a lot of tunes on my Garmin, actually, that I like listening to. And Although I go out with both watches at the moment because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ridiculous, quite frankly. I, I'm not sure I really need two watches. But 
it's kind of fun. Then I can practice converting between kilometers and miles, or you know, on the fly. Little test. I test myself actually as we're going. I'm thinking, right, I'm coming up to three miles, and coming up to seven miles. How many kilometers is that? You know, what speed am I going in kilometers versus miles? You know, it's a good, a good thing to do. It's absolutely unnecessary, but it's a, it's a fun thing to do. Uh, Goldshamp Paul says uh, the Clifton Eight arrived today. Awesome. Hope they, hope they're feeling good for you. I felt the Clifton Seven. A lot of people said it was quite soft i just never really found that in it it just felt a little um sort of dense to me i don't know if other people felt that but maybe i just got a duff pair of them you know they a, a, a second hand pair or so i don't know um aaron says over in the isle of man humidity and hay fever yeah my throat is really bad at the moment uh, it's definitely not covid related i've been sort of testing all that sort of stuff um, as a um, someone in education, we test ourselves a couple of times a week just to make sure. But it's, it's definitely hay fevery sort of thing. You can tell the difference. There's no other uh, other symptoms whatsoever. Um, picked up the Rebels though for 102. Awesome. The Rebel 2 is a great shoe. I think you're going to enjoy that one, Aaron. Uh, Running Man Sam says, I like Lightstrike Pro 2. Works good for the taller ones. Yeah, I think that's a big one. Someone said the other day that, that it just was a... It was a terrible, terrible shoe, the Adios Pro, and I thought, really? Have you, have you actually run in it? Yeah, most people I know that have picked it up kind of thought it was okay to start with, and the more miles you put into it, the better and better it gets. So, yeah, you do wonder sometimes. People get really upset about, you know, if you like a certain shoe, and they, they may not have even run in it or tried it. It's, it's a bit crazy. You know, I, I can't really comment on things that I haven't tried. Um, you do get some reviews sometimes. You see people like run like three miles in a shoe and just tow you a load of trash or something. It's just, how do you know? I feel a bit like a fraud unless I've put, you know, eight, nine more miles into it. I mean, the, the Trail 3s, I had some, I noted down some stuff from yesterday's run, but I wanted to get out on them again today just to confirm some of those things, you know. Someone might go out and buy them, you know, based on that, and I'm not sure I'd feel right to to not give that sort of transparent view. I think you've got to be on the money with that. Yeah, Runs Like a Donkey says, do you wear two watches all the time? I wear a chorus and a traditional watch and get some strange looks. Yeah, I, I, kind of, I just like sort of testing them out against each other, really. Um, as somebody that teaches human computer interaction, I, I'm big into that. So which one is like actually the, the best of the two, which is the easiest to use, which is the uh, the most intuitive, I suppose. I know Curos are um, updating their software soon and they're putting loads of new features into that software too. So that's going to even things up again a little bit. Well, I do need to try something out from Polar and um, that'll be fun. Um, what else got going on here? John Sutter, he's got to head off, I think. Yeah, his daughter's off to bed. He's got some new non-running related purchases. It sounds like he might have some new guitar pedals or maybe a new guitar. It'd be good to good to see you soon, John. Get some some gigs going again. I know there's some stuff in the pipeline very soon. So, yeah. Gerard's here. First time able to catch the live stream. Awesome, Jared. It's good to see you here. I often see Jared in the comments on the uh, videos, um, so it's great that great you're uh, in on the live stream. Just tune in, say happy birthday, and thanks for the great content. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Um, we have Terry Lee Boucher's here. He says hello, Ed Bird. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Ah, so Stephen goes off. Yeah, so I think you've got him for around about the same time as we're picking him up over here in the UK, Stephen. So, um, what am I going to grab for? Um, I know that I've got some Nike code, so I think I might get myself an Aero Swift top, um, a vest, uh, maybe for some racing and stuff. Although we tend to wear the club vests for racing um, for the Oval Town. Um, club vest so yeah it'd be nice to get an Aero Swift one just to see what the fuss is about really because where I've picked up the Aero Swift tights uh, the half tights they are 
brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Very cool. It was mainly the sort of top half of me, it was too hot earlier. Um, Keith Egerton's in the house. Happy birthday, Eddie says. Thank you very much, Keith. Um, Ted and Reece says, do I rate the Brian May red guitar copies? Um, I, I haven't much experience with those at all, actually. Um, one guitar I'm particularly enjoying playing at the moment is uh, I've got an American vintage uh, Fender Telecaster that I've added a Bigsby onto. But using one of those uh, plates that you can add on the top, so I've not drilled into it at all. So if I want to put it back to the original state, I can. And that's my main mainstay at the moment. Uh, Robin's got a question there about the Deviate Nitro. How does it fit on those wider toe box? Yeah, it is a bit of a wider toe box. I know a few people had some issues with the um, back heel, um, it cutting in a little bit to the to the back of the foot. Um, so do watch out for that. Um, for me, it was pretty much true to size. I know a few people commented about going down half a size. Not sure I'd really recommend that. Um, I don't think it's. Um, I don't think that that's going to make the shoe a better fit. I think that's going to go too far the other way. Uh, Javier uh, Campos says, do you run with new Adios Boston? No, I I've, I don't think that one's out in the wild yet, um, Javier. Uh, I know they've got it over in, I think it's Australia. I think that might be out over there. But it's not here in the UK. I have used some Morton products in the past. I really enjoyed the original Morton gels. I did not get on at all with the caffeine ones. They just sent me over the edge. They didn't work for me at all. Um, so, yeah, I hope that helps you out. But the, the original Morton gels were very good, but obviously quite expensive. Just for sort of average stuff, um, if I'm going over perhaps 10 miles or something, I might take a gel with me just to give me a little boost at some point. Um, I tend to use a science um, in sport. Is it science in sport? Yeah, that's right. I tend to use those. You can pick those up quite cheap over here. Uh, Daz H says, happy birthday, Ed. Thank you very much. I just started um, my running coaching badges. Oh, awesome. Uh, requires more coaches. Do you fancy getting into coaching, Ed? Or maybe you already do. I wouldn't mind getting uh, getting into coaching at some point, I think. Uh, it would be something quite fun to do. Um, yeah, I think as, as the channel sort of progresses and sort of things move forward like that, it would be really good to get involved with that. I think uh, it sort of ties in with teaching almost, um, that you get out a lot of what you put in. You know, you get what, what, what you give really. Um, and it's very enriching as well, seeing others improving and, and uh, sort of learning and all that kind of thing. It's, it's a really important thing to me, that. So, yeah, good suggestion, Daz. Kev Burton's in the house. It's happy birthday from the Yeovil Massive. Awesome, good to see you, Kev. Hope you're doing fine, buddy, and your bro, and all the, the, uh, the Burton family. I hope you've been out um, grinding down those next percents a little bit more. There's a super effort at the weekend as well. Some some serious running in some very warm temperatures, buddy. Um, Daniela says, um, love my DV Mark little jazz amp. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, this um, amps are a funny thing because, you know, everyone sees these big amps on stage and everything. But actually, most of the time, people are using smaller amps when they're recording in studios. And that's where some of those classic sounds are from, those small amps. And they always sound a bit better. You can push an amp a little harder. I was only talking about that with my dad the other day, about how uh, those smaller amps, when you push them a bit more, they just sound that bit better. Some good questions here. Stephen, you've always got some good questions for me. Um, Ed, where do you stand on the analog versus digital sound debate? Um, I th I'm quite lucky that I've got access to some of the Universal Audio plugins, um, and they are some of the best modelled digital kind of like analog gear that you can get. Um, but then again, I used to really enjoy using an old um, mixing board um, when I was a sound engineer. Uh, that was good fun when I used to do live sound for some bands, lots of American and Canadian hardcore bands, uh, metal. Um, lots of indie rock and stuff like that. Um, I used to enjoy using an analog desk then. I just feel it's a little bit more hands-on. 
I know you've got these virtual kind of touchscreen type things, but it's not the same. I like having act, direct access to stuff, and you can you feel a little bit bit more connected, I suppose, to the actual sound and the music. Um, Greg says hi from South Africa. Happy birthday! Thanks, Greg. Thanks for tuning in. It's good to see you guys here. If you're in the chat and you haven't done so already, please hit that like button, guys. It really does help us out um, and pushes us up to the toppermost of the poppermost, as John Lennon used to say. Apparently. I'm sure there's some sort of uh, proof that he used to say that somewhere, but apparently that's what he used to say to the guys, to G him up before a gig. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll... Maybe I'll um, I am working on a running news track to use as the intro to the running news. Um, that's, that's in the works. It's, it's going to be happening soon. Got a couple of people I'm pulling in on that one to... Uh, to help out on guitars, so yeah, some Yeovil legends. Guarana87 says, do you know where Slovenia is? <laughs> yes, yeah, I certainly do. Um, not less, uh, is today officially a day? Not officially, but it's it's uh, round about this time. Uh, Kevin Church says, uh, Guinness and Tia Maria. Oh, God, no, that's not happening. No, I like just like it. Just the the, the pure stuff. The, the Guinness is it's good. Guinness is good for you, apparently. That's what they used to say. Oh, Kent M. Um, yes, it's it's a a fine stout to celebrate. Guinness and Port Chaser. Oh gosh, you guys have got some crazy ideas. Sort of things my wife would get up to. I think. Um, Greg says we have lots of Adi Adios Pro shoes in South Africa. Now, it's strange, isn't it, you see, because you can't buy that shoe in the UK at the moment for love nor money. Um, I see some people trying to sell them on, like, StockX and stuff like that for crazy cash. So it's interesting that it's a load over there. Greg, maybe you can make yourself some cash there, get some, get a few pairs and <laughs> sell them on to people. I could have quite easily done an ice bath earlier, Benzie News. I could have quite easily done that. Steve knows the Guinness and Black, that was a big thing. Oh, the flat is too hot for the flat cap now. I've had to, to opt for the uh, the tailwind hat. It's a little bit more vented. Uh, Richard Johnson says, recommend you watch Napoleon Dynamite, a crate of Guinness, a pack of cheesy tots, and then a game of swing ball in the garden. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, I have an interesting um, story with swing ball, Richard. When I was about, um, how old would I have been? Let's think about this. I think I may have been about eight or nine years old. Now, Home Alone was definitely out at that time when this happened, when this crazy incident happened. Now, a cousin of mine was down uh, playing swing ball and uh, I was obviously, you know, on form that day. And you know those swing ball bats were pretty sizeable weapons. Um, we were playing and I won and I believe I did some sort of winning dance and uh, then found a swing ball bat flying towards me. And it hit me right on the head. Of course, I was poleaxed, and so I fell down. And uh, I always remember my mum saying, "Ah, you'll be all right. You know, you'll, you'll get up in a sec." And I was you know, sort of dazed, you know, trying to get up. And uh, God, yeah, I remember I had a real corker of a bruise on my on my forehead for a while. Yeah, so it was round about that sort of time that I uh, I I started getting into sort of hip hop music and. I started editing tape together to make my own beats. So I had this reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. I used to record uh, drum parts on there and, and then kind of splice the tape up into my own beats and stuff. So, yeah, swing ball. I've, I've, I retired from swing ball around that period because, you know, I thought I've reached a pinnacle here and, you know, no one's going to beat me. They just had to resort to throwing a bat at me to, 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 be, to beat me, so... <laughs> Um, Javier says happy birthday to you and do trade the new Adios Boston and use Morton Gels when you're running. I, I I I haven't used the Boston yet. I'll probably look out to try and get it, um, Javier, when I can, and I'll probably stock up on some Morton Gels when uh, when some races are uh, absolutely 100% occurring. How many years young are you? I am. Uh, Crabosity, Crabosity. That's a, that's a cool name. That um, I am forty-one, I think. 
Yeah, I'm 41. Still. <laughs> oh, Rob Shooter ran in 32 degrees yesterday. Oh, Rob, I'll tell you what, you are a man of steel to be able to run in that sort of temperature. People will just melt here in the UK. There'd be just people melting on the pavement like some sort of weird art installation. That's what it would look like. I think it might be um, the laptop is, is, is going to catch fire any moment. It's producing a lot of heat here. What I might try and do is just turn the, um, the brightness down a little bit and see if I can save the laptop from exploding because it's, it's getting very warm. Um, Tribo Try says getting ready to retire the Beacon 3 is a good replacement for those. Ooh, the Beacon 3. I mean, in terms of like the weight and the sort of the purpose, maybe look at the, the Hyperion Tempo. I know it's a little extra in terms of Earth credits, but that's a, that's a good one. Um, Kev Burton says, if you like 138 beats per minute, what is your max heart rate? I think if I was to go all out, Kev, I'd probably be about 175, 176, something like that. Um, I mean, for my age, they would suggest it's probably like 179 or something like that. I don't know how this how they calculate this type of stuff, but um, yeah. So for me, that, that's just sort of like one, 135 around there is kind of slap bang in my kind of aerobic state. So I'm kind of... I'm working, but it's it's you know sustainable. Um, but then I know Strava kind of categorizes it in a slightly different way, where they've got this sort of endurance kind of zone uh, compared to things like um, this sort of tempo zone and a threshold zone. So it's all all a little bit different. But yeah, that's just sort of like if I slow any more than that, I'm basically I'm sort of like walking. I'm just sort of walking along because. Of the le le leg length, that's that's my problem. My problem is leg length. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that to anyone before. What's your problem? My problem is leg length. That's that's my issue. Uh, Stuart says he's wearing the Energy Threes today. Great shoe, a great shoe. I think the Energy Threes. There they are. They're knocking around up here. Beautiful things. Beautiful things for such a. A low kind of value price as well. Uh, and Aiden says he bought the Energy 3 today, couldn't resist. Yeah, they'll serve you well, those shoes, guys, are very good. Um, Goran87 says, Rob, just make burpees every day if you are isolated. Burpees are great. I'm sure I'm sure Rob can figure something out so he can do some running in a safe safe zone, a safe area. Uh, Scotty B says checking in from Minnesota, awesome. 81 Fahrenheit there. Uh, new park trail. Yeah, so it's warm. I, I I hit the trails the last couple of days just because there's lots of tree cover there. Um, you're nearer to the water as well as like the river nearby, so it just felt like it was a little bit. Um, What's the word? Just a little bit cooler, you know. Uh, what else is going on here? Does H says uh, happy birthday, Ed. Uh, what's the best birthday present? Um, it's just coming up the birthday, so um, in the next few days. So yeah, um, I'm not sure what what they what they could be. Uh, I think we might try to get over to Bournemouth or Pool. Um, uh, see see, uh, there's a running store over there. Uh, up and running and see Simon there he's fantastic fantastic dude um, I need to go over and see him and maybe pick up a few bits and pieces you want to try and keep those local or more local running stores going if you can uh, it's easy to buy stuff on the net isn't it but you know those companies just getting bigger and bigger and lots of um, running shoe manufacturers of course now have that whole distribution done themselves they're just selling directly to you aren't they so it's good to keep those Local stores going if we can. Dal says, which was the best birthday present received as a kid? Two turntables. Now my dad, he, he kind of, uh, he got me to learn a lesson one Christmas. Because um, I'd asked for a couple of turntables when I was about nine, I think. And he said to me, um, 
I got one. So I opened it up and there it was. And I had a mixer as well. And I said to him, I'm going to save up my money. Um, anything I get, do some jobs, all that kind of stuff, and get another one. And that was the test. It was to see if I got upset by only having one. When I didn't, and I said, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to make it happen. You know, I'm going to get another one myself. And he just went, there's another one for you. And that was the test. So always remembered that. It's always been really clear in my mind. You know, you've got to work at stuff. Work hard to get it. If you want something, work and work and get it. It's, you know, it's had a big effect on me, that, I suppose. Oh, we're getting a, getting a little closer to 100 concurrent views. That's, that's good. I always like to see that. Um, if you're in the chat, guys, you haven't done so already, please hit that like button. It really does help us to uh, expand outwards like a balloon, like a, a shoe balloon. Yeah. Um, Patrick says, hey Ed, what is your actual name? Is it Ed? It is. It is. It is Ed. It's true. Um, Grind 87, cheers with black beer. We drink lots of beer in Slovenia. Awesome stuff. Yeah, it's the Guinness, the stout, the classic stuff. More a winter drink, really, but I just, I just really enjoy it these days. It's nice. Cider and things just too sweet for me these days. I like the earthy tones of the Guinness, it's good. Ah, right, so Javier says, uh, do I use Morton products when I'm when I'm practicing? No, no, I, I kind of save them for races, though I would say it's a good idea to try and use stuff that you're going to use in a race when you're training, so you can check that your body's going to kind of get on with it. Um, don't ever use anything in a race that you haven't used before. Always make sure you check it. I remember an awesome video um, a while back, it's probably a couple of years back now, that Seth did, um, where he was actually testing out, um, like, drinking, like, the uh, the energy drink stuff they were going to have at this race. So he even got paper cups and stuff, and he was testing out, like, grabbing them as he went by. That was awesome. I used to love it when he did those videos. Um, like, the, the 5K, like, race videos. He'd do, like, a vlog about it. You know, he'd get up and he'd be drinking the coffee and then he'd go to the race and I used to love those videos. I actually do some more of those 5Ks, you know, and just, just smash it. Just just go out and win a few 5Ks. and I like, I like those, you know. They were fun. Oh, Tempo, uh, tempo Next Percent Cake, that'll be cool. Certainly. Um, any ideas when the Boston 10 is coming out? says uh, Jim. No, uh, no um, clear info about that. I mean, they just dropped that Adios 6 just just like that. Somebody just went, hey, we better put these on the website, guys. You know, the, what are these shoes in this box, you know, at this at the warehouse? Oh, it's those. You know, we better put them on there. It's really odd. <laughs> Um, Garana87. Um, I, I, I use Garmin, but I don't really use the, the app to sort of put stuff out there. If you want to follow me there, go go over into Strava. Um, if you look in the uh, video descriptions, the link to the Strava is there, so you should be able to find it. Uh, Joe Vincent says, did you already get the coronavirus vaccine? I've had one um, a few, about a month or so ago. Um, and that kind of knocked me for six. It bowled me over like a skittle uh, for a couple of days, but then I came back stronger. Kind of like the Terminator, you know, when he kind of comes back together. It's like even stronger. Um, Keith Shoemaker is here. He says, do you run for a specific club team? Yeah, for the Yeovil um, Road Running Club. That's my That's my team. So, um, Benzie News Showdown says, uh, Shoedown, sorry, says here in Sydney, Australia, I'm doing a local park run Saturday, then get my second Pfizer vaccination next door. <laughs> awesome. That's a, um, that's a good scene. I know they've opened up some extra stuff here in the UK, um, at the Twickenham Rugby Ground. So you can go in there and you can basically get vaccinated, you know, on the fly, as it were. So it's a good thing you need to get more and more people vaccinated. Um, not less, it's, oh, it's tough to get that Adi, Adi Zero Pro 
oh sorry the Addy Zero Pro um, I love the Addy Zero Pro but not everybody does should you wait for the Boston I don't know if, if that Adidas code is going to expire perhaps I would recommend getting in there and and uh, grabbing something with it perhaps but uh, yeah it's hard to say when it's going to launch Uh, Marcus says he's he's bought several pairs of the Energy 3s. Awesome. Glad that one's working out for you, Marcus. It sounds like you're really enjoying it. Also got some next percents for London. Uh, but want a partner long run shoe. Ooh, then the next, I mean, if you can find maybe the Peg Turbo or something. There's nothing really like the next percent. There's nothing that's quite like it, you know. It is its own sort of shoe. I mean, it's it's wild to, to, to say you know get another pair and use that for training but there's nothing that's really like it yeah i mean maybe the tempo next percent but it's quite a different ride isn't it um benzy news yeah rob weatherall in with some good advice there on the um science and sport gels they can be picked up nice and cheap can't they um, I may have to get myself a big box. I normally get like the 30 or the 40 pack or something. Um, and then just put them in various places, you know, around the house. So that if I'm ever heading out and doing a longer run, I always forget to take stuff with me. So um, then I never forget. And they're always there, you know, reminding me to, to take one. Um, Jared says, HR question for you. Um, do you have to run, walk to train your rate to stay low as your improved pace? I can run easy, but my heart rate goes up 20 BPM higher than it should, even at easy pace. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on with me, really. It's just It seems to just remain relatively low. Um, I just find it tough, you know, if I'm not, other than racing, if I'm just training, I really find it hard to raise sort of like the adrenaline level up. Because I think that's what gets you higher up into that sort of, Nine, you know, 85 90 percent area. It's, I find it tough. Um, yeah, just easy. I mean, well, if I walk, it's probably about 95, something like that, 100. And my resting heart rate's about 51, something like that, 52, something like that. Pretty low, I think. Well, I mean, some elite athletes, I guess, you know, they have really, really low heart rates. That's just, you know, beating every every couple of minutes or something. Um, we've got a couple of minutes left here guys, let's just see if we can grab a couple of um, questions. Uh, J Max, thanks for stopping by, it's very kind of you to wish me the uh, happy birthday. Yeah, Rob's saying they're just starting to acclimatise, I think, I think uh, you do after a little while. Uh, Stephen Grinsdorf says they're 20, 220 minus your age, yeah, so it's about 179, something like that. Yeah, I'm never really sure with heart rate stuff, you know. I mean, if you had a, if you had a super um, accurate way of reading it, but I, I don't think there is. You know, the wrist-based stuff works okay. I tend to wear that polar strap I've got up here. That gives me a much more accurate reading. But then when you're starting to sweat and all that kind of thing, I think it sends it into these wild spirals sometimes of on-off sort of things. Right, guys, I'm going to draw this to, on to, to a close. Thank you very much, all of you, for tuning in today. I think there is a um, Garana87. Thank you again for that super chat. That's really kind of you. It does help the channel out a great deal. Um, have a fantastic rest of your evening, guys. Enjoy your running. My name's Ed Bud. I'll be seeing you very soon. Peg Trail 3 review, hopefully, later on for you. So keep an eye out. Keep your eyes peeled. Catch you soon, cats.